Welcome to this week's Hashtag Wednesday Weekly. It's a weekly information session with the voluntary partners and our public sector partners. This week's session is all about the Town Hall's restoration project in Rochdale and our host is Caroline Storr. Over to you, Caroline. Thanks ever so much, Michelle, and it's a real pleasure to be here this morning. Uh, I'm going to be talking uh, about the restoration project at the Town Hall in general and looking particularly at ways that we're restoring the building, that we're bringing it back to life and um, how we're going to make it a, a visitor attraction that's going to be welcome for everybody in 2023. I'll just start sharing my screen now. Bear with me one second. Um, Okay, so yeah, my name's Caroline Storr. I'm the Heritage Engagement Manager based at Rochdale Town Hall. Um, just a little bit of background really. Um, for those of you who know it, um, if anybody, yeah, you ask anybody about Rochdale and buildings in Rochdale, and they will probably say Rochdale Town Hall. It's been an iconic building um, dominating the skyline really for over 150 years uh, and when the idea of it was first conceived um, in the 1860s it was really as a testimony to the prosperity and wealth that Rochdale had accumulated particularly through its cotton industry and it was a physical manifestation uh, uh, and a building that stood proud and told the rest of the world just how well Rochdale was doing. Um, it was built, however, in an age uh, where it was sort of a juxtaposition, really, of great prosperity and wealth in Victorian times, but also in that times um, of, of dark satanic mills, when there was also incredible poverty, uh, particularly um, for, for those who didn't have work. Um, but the town hall really um, stood as a monument uh, to who, to how well um, Rochdale was doing at the time. Um, it was a city of industry, particularly related to cotton, but it also had a lot of other mills and industry as well. For example, Healy Brothers, who made ropes in Haywood. Um, and the architect responsible for designing Rochdale Town Hall was William Henry Crossland. He was a Yorkshireman, he won a competition to design the Town Hall, and he was actually a student of um, uh, another famous architect, um, Alfred Waterhouse, who designed Manchester Town Hall. Uh, originally, Crossland thought that the um, town hall would cost around £20,000. The final bill came to about eight times that amount. Um, the first uh, stone went into the ground in um, around 1865 uh, by the then uh, by the MP John Bright, and the town hall opened to great applause uh, to the public on the 27th of September, 1871. And it's actually the Town Hall's 150th birthday coming up at the end of this month. So we're going to have a little celebration about that Sorry, I'm just, um, towards the end of this month, 150 years of the Town Hall. Um, on the opening event, when it was fully illuminated by gaslight, the town hall in all its glory was likened to an oriental temple. Uh, and it was also described, sorry, I'm having trouble, as a continental cathedral of dazzling beauty and intoxicating elegance. It really was something that was built to rival uh, the continental uh, palaces and cathedrals across Europe, and it did just that. It has so many interesting features that makes Rochdale Town Hall a place of not just local, but national and international significance. And that's why the National Lottery Heritage Fund has instead decided to invest millions of pounds uh, in restoring it so that people can enjoy it, so that it's 
its uh, nationally significant features can be fully restored um, and so that it can be a visitor attraction when it reopens in 2023. Um, this picture here um, is of the interior of the Great Hall in the Town Hall. Um, it's an etching from Victorian times. For those of you who have been inside the Great Hall, you'll know that it hasn't changed much since this time. And this is a picture that was uh, produced around the 1870s when the hall first opened. And in many ways, the hall hasn't changed that much since it was built. The main significant thing really is what's happened around it, but also there was a dreadful fire in 1883, which meant that its original clock tower burnt down. Um, you can see the original clock tower on the left, on the left picture here. Um, it was then reconstructed, but not as tall as it was. Originally, it was 290 feet tall, which is incredibly tall for a, um, a, a, a clock tower. It was then reduced to 240 feet, feet and rebuilt. Um, and that's the clock tower that you see today. Um, the cause of the fire was never known, but the architect of the, the new clock tower, again, was Alfred Waterhouse, who was the architect of many buildings, including um, Manchester Town Hall. And here's the clock tower today, familiar to many, uh, that famous base. Um, the bells that have uh, substituted the bells of uh, Big Ben on a few occasions now. And there's also a picture of the weather vane that's on the roof of the building to the right here too. This is a picture of the Town Hall Square in 1893. Again, you can see it's, the building certainly hasn't changed much. And you could argue the environment hasn't changed significantly either. There are obviously cobbles uh, on the esplanade there, uh, but you can see St Chad's in the background there. There's a mill, but many of the buildings are still standing and the bridge to the River Roach as well. This is a postcard of the Esplanade and the park slopes around 1900. Again, you can see the town hall in the background there, very little changed, but in terms of transport systems, you've got the tram here, horse and cart, and you can also see what was the library that we now know as touchstones on the left of the postcard. The hall has been used for many things throughout the centuries. Uh, it's had many parties and many banquets. This is a picture taken around the 1930s of a works do in the Great Hall from what looks like they're enjoying themselves there. Not quite as enjoyable. <laughs> um, this is a picture uh, taken in the old committee room in the 1940s, uh, a room full of men with suits on. It doesn't look as interesting as that works do from the 1930s, but it starts to give you a snapshot of how the hall's been used um, over the 150 years that it's been standing. And the golden thread that runs through it is not that it's just a grade one building of national significance, but that it has always had people in its fabric. During the First World War, it was used as a recruitment centre for soldiers uh, going off to the front. Here you can see them sat outside the town hall, ready to be transported to the front. This picture was taken around 1916. Um, and when it was originally uh, conceived, the building how, had various purposes. It was a town hall, it was going to be a place for dignitaries, where the mayor resided, where public um, office duties were carried out, but it was also a fire station, it was a police station, um, it was a court, and it had prison cells in it. Interestingly, these elements still exist within the building, and from 2024 onwards, they'll be open to the public. Uh, the cells still exist and they're in the basement of the town hall. Uh, we often joke that that's where we put naughty visitors. So yeah, don't, in, don't annoy the staff and volunteers too much. Uh, from 2020, 2024 onwards, uh, visitors will be able to look in the cells and get a taste what, of what life was like if you had to spend a few nights there. The cells are divided into female and male cells. Um, they've survived incredibly well, though they were very basic, poorly lit and poorly sanitised. You certainly weren't encouraged to spend much time there, but they were linked to the courts above. So if a sentence fell against your favour, you'd spend the night or a few in a cell before you were put in prison. 
Uh, in terms of workrooms, uh, the town hall is, is, is currently used as an office by people who are working on its restoration, including myself. Um, but it's also been used for uh, off other offices associated with the local authority. This is an interesting one. I'm not sure whose office this was. You can see a typewriter here, various pieces of equipment, a large photocopier, and also a dartboard. So it looks like they had lots of fun there. Not sure how much work they got done. Um, and yeah, I said it's been, Rochdale Town Hall has been the office of people working for the local authority for really uh, 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 over a century. Um, we found this poster the other day, which dates back to, to, I think it's 2007, talking about stretches for office workers. I like the one on the bottom line that says about a big wide yawn. That's my kind of exercise. Rochdale has its own blue plaque on the outside of the wall. As you might know, Rochdale has two kind of colours of plaques. The blue plaques celebrate the famous people, places and historic events in the borough. And the purple plaques celebrate everything related to Gracie Fields. Um, there are other blue plaques immediately surrounding the town hall, those related to Packer Street and Packer Spout, also the old courthouse and Butterworth's jewellers who've been in the town centre since 1903. Um, part of the reason for the restoration, though, was really because the building was starting to fall apart. You can see evidence of it here. The roof is in bad shape. Many of its significant features are in really bad, a bad way. They've not had the maintenance that they've needed for many, many years. Uh, and most of all, it's not very physically accessible. Um, the lifts, th th there are either no lifts at all or the one lift there is doesn't work. So the project really is about making the hall fully accessible physically, intellectually and culturally to everybody. Um, and at the moment, the town hall is a building site. Nobody can get on it apart from those who are working on it. We have contractors on site all day, every day, who are working around the clock to make sure that the town hall is restored to its full glory and ready for opening in late summer 2023. This is an artist's impression of how the Town Hall Square will look following the development and restoration. As you can see, the, the building itself really there's not much change here and the statue of Gracie Fields will remain, but the Town Hall Square will be fully pedestrianised, so it'll be quiet, there'll be no traffic. Um, around the Town Hall Square there'll be benches, uh, there'll be sculptures, planting, um, there'll be pieces of public art, um, and it will be a fantastic event space. Um, the Esplanade, uh, unlike this picture here, will have no cars on it, so we will create a walkway to the cenotaph that you can see in the picture here, and we're going to create a, a warp and weft walkway uh, in homage to Rochdale's cooperative routes, which will provide a sort of visual walkway from the town hall to the memorial gardens. There will also be a cafe terrace where you can sit out and have a cup of tea or a gin or a glass of wine and it'll be a nice place to relax, have lunch, watch the world go by and soak up the atmosphere. Um, the hall is blessed with many staircases, all of which are quite beautiful and usually flanked with lovely stained glass. There's a selection of them here, but for those who, who for whom stairs are not very good, clearly this presents a problem. So when with the hall reopens, it will be fully accessible and it will have a lift in each wing so that can, people can go right to the top of the clock tower and really appreciate all the facets of the town hall. This is a staircase leading uh, the grand staircase from the Great Hall. Um, it's a true make an entrance staircase. Um, it's used for weddings and is a wonderful backdrop to photos, but again, in terms of accessibility, is not fantastic. Interestingly, this staircase is unusual for Victorian times in that its steps are wider uh, and much um, smaller than usual, and that was so that the ladies in their big dresses could go up and down the steps more easily from the dances that they were, they were enjoying in the Great Hall. Um, Part of the restoration is about also bringing back spaces to their former glory. Um, this space is what's called the Bright Hall. 
Uh, it was the former library in the town hall, and then it became home to Rochdale Music Service. And we've, we're currently renovating it. We've stripped back the mezzanine floors that were put into the 1980s to reveal some wonderful original features. This is how it currently looks. And this is how it's going to look post-restoration. This is going to be a space for community events, family activities at the weekend. It can be a hired out space. It's a beautiful bright space um, named after John Bright, but also because the windows um, create wonderful natural light in the space, which lends itself really well to creative activities. And one of our projects that we're going to do is to um, basically adorn the ceiling with a range of panels that will be designed by local people uh, working with professional artists. So it's Rochdale's answer to the Sistine Chapel really. So if you are involved or support anybody who would like to get involved in those creative projects, working with professional artists to create permanent works of art in the Bright Hall um, and to create a ceiling uh, that, that's a real wow factor, we'd really love to hear from you. Uh, John Bright, who that name, the room was named after, was a local mill owner. He was also a Liberal MP for Manchester in the 1850s. He was a harsh critic of slavery. He repealed the corn laws, which basically meant people could, local people could afford to eat. He was all, an all round good man. And there's various monuments to him around uh, Rochdale. This is an artist's impression of how one of our main exhibition areas will look as well. One of the differences when the town hall reopens is that people will be able to get into it. Um, before the town hall was really a place where maybe you might only go if you went to a wedding or an event, you had a prom at school, or you were getting married, you were going to the registry office, or there was a private function. And that's the real difference. Um, part of our project is to make it open, to be welcome to everybody of all ages and all abilities. Um, and one way that we can create that access is also by telling people what the town hall's about who made it, what happened there, and to use it as a lens through which we can see uh, the last 200 years of Rochdale's history. So we'll talk about the history of Rochdale, its people, uh, where, where they've come from, and what they do now. And we'll have various exhibition areas within the town hall. And this is an artist's impression of how our permanent exhibition area will look, which will be just as you come in through the main hall. And again, if you are, um, connected with any groups who'd like to help us with researching those stories that go into our exhibitions, we'd really love to hear from you. There's literally a thousand or more years of Rochdale history um, that we've got to cram into some quite small spaces. So if anybody has got any photos of when they've come to the town hall in the past, or if they've got any interesting anecdotes or stories they'd like to share, we'd really love to hear from you. Please get in touch. I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the spaces now in the town hall that you might be familiar with if you know the building. If you don't know them, you might know them by the end of this presentation. I'm going to tell you um, what we're doing to them at the moment. This is the exchange, which is the main entrance to the town hall and will remain so um, after the restoration. Um, it was originally takes its name from the fact that local cotton traders we're going to come and sell their goods here. Actually, when the town hall opened in 1871, it was such a beautiful space that they decided to just keep it at an entrance hall. And there, so there were separate places made for the traders off this area, one for female traders and one for male traders. Um, this really is a wow factor when you enter the town hall and will continue to be. But what we're doing as part of the restoration was we're giving it a really good clean, particularly the Minton tiles on the floor. Um, these Minton tiles were, as the name suggests, made by the company Minton, were based in Shropshire uh, in the 1850s. They're now part of Wedgwood. They really are the most exquisite and beautiful tiles, but they're a bit dirty now after having pe people standing on them for 150 years. So they're getting a really good clean by friends of ours from Lancashire Conservation Service. But if you know of anybody who would help us to, would like to help us clean those tiles, and they're literally thousands of them, we'd love to hear from you. 
it's a great skill to learn. We'd love to teach you. And it's actually really meditative as well. And it's, it will really help to put the colour back into the town hall. Uh, these tiles depict um, the coats of arms um, of the of Duchy of Lancaster and of uh, Rochdale as well. You can see the pillars here of pink and grey granite, which are highly polished, uh, and beautiful vaulted ceilings of pink and grey stone, which really are take your breath away. Again, they all have some cleaning work, but essentially remain the same and be the first port welcome that when you come into the town hall. Rochdale Town Hall is also blessed with a huge number of decorative stained glass panels and windows. There are literally hundreds of them, all of which take your breath away. And they all tell a story. A lot of them depict the working lives of Rochdalians, or they'll tell us about the, um, how people lived, the flora and fauna of the area, um, how people worked, what they did in their day-to-day -day lifestyles. But many do emphasize the importance of the wool trade to the prosperity of the borough, which at the end of the day um, financed the building of the town hall. This particular um, stained glass here shows a sheep fleece, uh, which obviously gave its name to nearby Fleece Street. This is a montage of some of the amazing stained glass in the town hall. As you can see, so many different motifs from King Henry VIII to plants, to flowers, to swans, to crowns, uh, to costume, to ships and elephants, all manner of detail that help tell us about the rich tapestry of Victorian life in Rochdale 150 years ago. Um, the, some, many of the stained glass is, is really unusual as well. Uh, this is some stained glass of Oliver Cromwell. This is really, it's really, really unusual actually that any public buildings pay homage to Oliver Cromwell. He was a really divisive character because essentially he uh, helped to topple the crown and he um, formed the independent state. Uh, defeated the king and established parliamentarian law. He was Lord Protector from 1653 to 1658. Um, and this is a really interesting piece of English history that's enshrined within Rochdale Town Hall. Um, other people enshrined uh, within the stained glass in the rose windows are Prince Albert and Queen Victoria. Um, I always thought it was really interesting when I had my first tour of the town hall, somebody told me that many people think this is a stained glass window to Phil Collins, because it looks more like Phil Collins than Prince Albert. See what you think. <laughs> but nevertheless, it is a stunning piece of stained glass that will again be restored as part of the restoration. This is the rose window to Queen Victoria here, and you can just see the top of the organ reaching uh, the rose window to which she is dedicated. Uh, these particular pieces of stained glass depict the months of the year and the harvested fruits and flowers and crops associated with them. And we also have uh, hundreds of stained glass dedicated to kings and queens from William the Conqueror right up to Prince Victorian and King Albert. It's a stunning sequence of stained glass and we're very lucky to have them at Rochdale Town Hall. Even more excitingly, as part of our restoration, we're putting a stained glass workshop in the basement of the town hall. So local people, or oh, people from outside Rochdale too, can come and learn how to make their very own pieces of stained glass. We're going to be running workshops with professional stained glass artists who will be on site all day, every day. Um, and their job really will be to maintain the stained glass and to restore and repair it, but also to teach workshops to people. And these could be anything from a two hour workshop on how to learn how to make a sun catcher to, you know, um, full accredited courses in learning how to become a stained glass artist yourself. So we're really excited about that workshop going in the basement of the town hall, which will open in 2023. But we're also going to be running a series of workshops before that over the next couple of years. And we'd love local people, anybody who wants to get involved in making a contemporary piece of stained glass for the town hall, we'd love to hear from you because we're going to be putting that by the grand staircase when we reopen. And that's one of our community projects that we're going to be running over the next uh, couple of years. Um, 
as well as stained glass, there are literally um, miles worth of painted walls within the town hall, beautifully hand painted walls and wallpapers, stunning and very rare, all of which tell a story. And again, in terms of um, the volunteer programme, which I'll come on to talk about in a minute, we'd love it if anybody can help us to restore these wallpapers by cleaning them. A full training will be given by our friends at Lancashire Conservation Studio, which mainly involves trying to take off the many years of cigarette smoke and tar and everything that's built up on these wallpapers so they can be revealed to their full bright glory again. Um, in terms of other areas where there's um, these wonderful art and craft works. This is a ceiling panel from the reception room um, showing some of the, um, the ploughs for arable farming and a sheep for pastoral farming. Again, telling that story of how people lived their lives 150 years ago, and the kind of industries they were involved with, very much land-based. Um, this in the small exchange, which was one of the mayor's parlour, this ceiling depicts people at work and shows you the kinds of industries that people were involved in 150 years ago, but also all the industries that were involved in making and constructing the town hall itself. And we have many panels like this throughout the town hall that tell us how people worked, people who were hatters, cloggers, who worked in the cotton industry, um, who um, sewed cotton, um, who worked on the land, um, who were farriers, uh, a range of different skills. Again, going back to hand-painted murals, this is one of a greyhound. Uh, animals are a real motif around the town hall. And in the two years before we reopen, we want to use animals as a way of capturing people's imagination through our creative and artistic projects, um, particularly working with young people and children. Um, this is an angel in the Great Hall, again as part of the restoration. These beautiful wooden angels will be restored to their former glory, given a good clean. Um, uh, they're, they're gilted in gold and they used to hold the massive chandeliers in their hands. You might be able to see a, a, a little bit of one there. Um, the chandeliers have now gone, but the angels remain. And they are apparently all slightly different in their facial features and expressions. Um, there are over 300 panels in the ceiling in the Great Hall. As part of our efforts to fundraise for this huge undertaking, uh, which is the restoration of the Town Hall, um, we're asking people to help sponsor a ceiling panel. If you're interested in doing that, please get in touch. Um, each of the ceiling panel um, depicts, again, flora, fauna, coats of arms of the Duchy of Lancaster and also of the emblems of Scotland, England, Ireland and Wales. Um, as part of the restoration, these panels will be cleaned up. They're very dark at the moment, 150 years of pipe smoke, cigarette smoke, uh, all sorts of things going up into the ceiling has taken its toll. But when we reopen in 2023, um, their brightness will be restored. We have a lot of corbels uh, around the town hall. Uh, these are used to hold up elements uh, of the ceiling and roof space in order to look, make them uh, look a bit more attractive. Some really interesting characters depicted in these corbels. And we have gargoyles as well, originally put in, uh, again, as a practical feature, really, to stop water flowing down the walls of buildings so that they didn't uh, ruin them. Uh, the town hall is blessed with a plethora of gargoyles or with interesting features. Again, they lend themselves so well to creative projects to inspire the imagination. And that's a lot of what we'll be doing in the two years before we reopen. This is a balcony view. You can see here across to the cenotaph. Um, people will be able to go onto the balcony when we reopen. It's a real, again, a real wow moment, standing with the golden lions. Um, on the balcony, it's been graced by famous faces like Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen Mother, um, Gracie Fields, Lisa Stansfield, and not forgetting players from Rochdale FC Football Club. And to the left of this, you can see uh, what's now Touchstones. And to the right, it, you'll see the, the shopping centre, number one Riverside and the market. Rochdale's had a market since 1251. 
and it had its charter granted by Henry III. Part of the restoration as well is all about creating access to spaces that people have never been able to get into before. One of these is the mayor's office that you can see here, again, beautifully adorned with wooden panelling, um, hand-painted wallpaper, fantastic ceilings, hand-carved fireplaces. And when we reopen, people will uh, be able to dress up in chains and hats and pretend to be mayor for the day, look important, uh, sit at a table uh, and uh, pretend to make some important decisions. Another area that um, people have never been able to get into usually, but they will be from 2023, is the small exchange. This was one of the mayor's private um, entertaining rooms, amazing tiles, beautiful walls. You can see the corbels on the walls there, fantastic stained glass. Again, um, we'll have small exhibitions in this space telling people um, what used to happen here. We'll have volunteers telling um, our visitors about some of the stories uh, that happened in this space, some of the decisions taken. Um, and again, people will be able to walk into the Mayor's Parlour as well, a space that you never would have been able to get into before. Um, be able to um, be brought to life through hands-on activities, exhibitions, and also through um, our volunteers. Another one here of the Mayor's Parlour, Again, beautiful panelling, hand-painted walls, fantastic ceilings. This is the reception room here. Um, this is where um, local people could often be invited, certainly a hundred years ago, to hear some of the committee meetings that were in progress. It said that if they didn't like the decisions, then they got um, the uh, local members would get rotten tomatoes thrown at them. This is a beautiful room. You can see the four stoned arches here uh, across uh, the ceiling. Um, fantastic frescoes of uh, painted of how people worked and telling the story of the cotton industry right from Egypt until uh, 150 years ago when cotton was uh, mass produced in the mills in Rochdale. This is a room again that local people will be able to go into. There'll be hands-on activities and exhibitions telling our visitors about the story of Rochdale and the town hall. Uh, this is currently the council chamber. It was previously the court. Um, this won't be open to the public in 2023, but we will hope that we'll be open a year or so after that. Um, this was once the court and it was built um, when the town hall opened in 1870s, it was the uh, magistrates court, all sorts of um, uh, sessions would be sat here. Um, we know from records there was a number of court cases, particularly for children. Children were heavily sentenced in Victorian times. Their sentences could range from anything to um, long term imprisonment uh, to uh, whipping. So um, this this room tells a real story. You have to imagine the kind of people that would sat in the chairs, um, the sort of sentences that handed out, the terrible Victorian punishments um, that that was that came about from here. Um, but in its latter years, from 1971, it was a council chamber um, where the mayor would sit at the back, and the councillors would sit um, and have their meetings. Uh, other uh, parts of the restoration include um, looking at and making sure the, the, the clock uh, in the clock tower is fully working and restored to its full of former glory, some of its cogs here. Um, also items like the, the organ, the fantastic incredible organ that's in the Great Hall that still works today. Um, um, some of you who've, who've been to events at the Town Hall might remember this. Again, as part of our fundraising efforts, we're asking if people would like to sponsor one of the pipes in the organ. Um, it's, it costs an incredible amount to restore the organ because it is so huge. Um, but we'd love people to get involved in our fundraising efforts by sponsoring a ceiling panel or one of our organ pipes. This is a picture of the wonderful Great Hall lamp would have originally been lit by gas. Um, this is a picture of our Great Hall today, dressed for a wedding. When we reopen in 2023, we will continue to do weddings plus many other events. 
Um, we'll continue to have that full programme of events, but we'll also be supplemented by a fantastic public programme, which will be for families at the weekends, um, for um, special educational needs groups after school, uh, for a range of different community and volunteer groups at the week and at the weekend. Uh, we'll also be putting on a range of events in the town hall square to attract as many people as possible to the town hall so they can all enjoy it. Um, most of the as activities, particularly the public programme, will be free. The bells as well, not forgetting the bells, originally restored, uh, originally put in in the 1870s. Uh, they've been used as a substitute for the bells of Big Ben, uh, where on the occasions when they've not been working. So they really have sound out, sounded out to the nation. Um, in other areas, it's not just about public areas that are, um, you know, exhibition spaces or hands-on spaces where you can have fun and really take yourself back to 150 years, but it's also about those spaces for hospitality and catering. This is our Zodiac bar. This will be fully renovated um, and and made, made to look sort of vastly better really. Um, it's so called because it's got these beautiful painted ceilings, but they are also in desperate need of repair. So the full Zodiac uh, wallpaper will be restored to its former glory uh, and it'll be a, a, a real sight to behold when that's done. Similarly, restoration of uh, the beautiful um, oil painting uh, that's in the Great Hall, which is the signing of the Magna Carta by the pre-Raphaelite artist Henry Holiday. Um, that's looking a bit worse for wear after again many years of uh, sitting in a hall where there have been a great number of events uh, and all things kind of splashed on it. So again, as part of our fundraising efforts, we would like to restore this fantastic work of art. Um, and in the two years, so starting from now, really, um, up until we reopen, we'll be doing a range of creative activities that will aim to get people of all ages and abilities engaged in the town hall. We'd really love to hear from you if you um, support a group that would like to get involved with a range of creative activities led by, led by professional artists that use the town hall as inspiration. I think you can see from some of the slides, there are so many inspiring aspects to the town hall, it really does lend itself to creative projects. Um, anything you know, that are inspired by the stained glass, the plaster work, the woodwork, the stonework, um, the painted murals, furniture, all kinds of things. But you can really let your imagination run away with you. And what we'd really like to do is allow local people and their imagination to be part of the town hall when it reopens. Um, starting from now, we're also offering a range of training and learning opportunities and apprenticeships. Um, we've currently got, uh, our, this week we've had our stained glass apprentice started. We also have apprentices working on the restoration of the building itself with our contractors. Um, we're going to be running, um, starting from October the 11th, a course specialising restoration. So if anybody would like to join that, that starts October the 11th. It will need an expression of interest, but it's all about learning how to help care for historic items in the hall um, and which will possibly lead to jobs at the end of it as well. It's an absolutely fantastic course run by our partners at Lancashire Conservation Studio and Lord Glazier's Trust. Do get in touch if you're interested. We've got a huge volunteer programme um, which starts now really. We're really looking for people who'd like to help us bring the story of Rochdale and the Town Hall to life. We'd love it if people wanted to help us research pictures, objects, stories that can all go into our exhibitions. We'd really love it when we reopen, when we reopen for people to help us tell the story to visitors. So we're looking for people who can uh, bring the experience for life to people, who can do everything from guide people around, to give guided tours, to just offer a warm welcome and a friendly face and a hello. Um, also more specialist volunteers who can give specialist tours about specific aspects of the building and also volunteers who can work specifically with children, school groups, um, kids with special educational needs etc. Uh, we're going to be running a series of events 
um, over the next two years, the next five years, in fact, which will range from everything from uh, lantern processions to small scale art workshops to big commissions like the bright ceiling and pieces of stained glass contemporary art. Um, our first public event really was this July with the big dig. Uh, if you didn't come along, you missed a treat, uh, but we'll be um, putting on exhibitions in our community cabin about what was found. Some fascinating things found, mainly from the Victorian period, but also beyond, um, and really started to give us an insight into life in Rochdale pre-1850. These are some pictures that were taken on that dig in July. Again, talk about conservation in action. We'd love it if people would help us get involved and get involved in helping to clean, for example, the wallpaper. You can see here a patch on the left that's been cleaned. It doesn't take a whole amount of work and is actually quite meditative. But as you can tell from some of the pictures, there is so much of it that any help that anybody can give us would be hugely grateful. And you'd be helping to play your part in restoring one of the most significant and beautiful buildings in the UK. Um, and when we reopen, really, it's also about creating a space where people feel welcome, where they feel relaxed, they're at home. You could come just for a cup of tea, wander around, or you could come for an event or activity or spend the whole day at the town hall and in the town hall square. We just want it to be welcome for everybody. You can get married here and you can come however old or however young you are, there'll be an activity for you from 2023. This is a picture from one of our weddings a few years ago in the exchange. Um, just talk about some of the courses for our volunteers or everyone who signs up to be one of our volunteers will have full training given and full support uh, by our trained staff. You don't have to have any training at all, but you might like to. You might like to further your learning, for example, by uh, doing courses in British Sign Language, in first aid or historical research, depending on where your interest areas lie. We're looking for people to be heritage ambassadors, basically helping us bring the experience alive for our visitors by meeting and greeting, providing a smile, a friendly face, and helping to guide people around the town hall. It is a big building and people might get lost. So one of the main ways that our volunteers can help us is by being wayfarers and, and helping people to get the most out of the building. It's important to us that our volunteers, both the ones that start with us now and the ones when we reopen, represent all the communities of Rochdale. And volunteers are a fantastic way of allowing buildings to become part of the community that they serve. And that's certainly what we want to do at the town hall. We'd like our, visit, our volunteers to represent all ages, all abilities, all interests and all communities. And in that way to truly reflect Rochdale. We just quickly as well, during restoration, we found a few things. This was a packet of uh, rheumatic cream made by Zermac and dispensed by chemists on Tweedale Street in Rochdale, dating from around the 1940s. Um, we found newspapers. This one dates from uh, the Rochdale Observer 1991, when the rats in the cellar and uh, they had to shut the canteen. I'm glad I wasn't eating in it that day. Um, we've discovered uh, some modern day graffiti in the first floor kitchen. Some of this done by Johnny in 2011. We've discovered pictures hidden behind cupboards. This is a photo of the engineers and workmen who installed the lift in the 1990s. The modern day findings and all of those will display, be displayed in our exhibition spaces when we reopen. And also not forgetting it's not just inside, but it's outside the town hall square. Court square will be an event space, but not just for the daytime, but for the evening as well. So lastly, all it remains for me to say is we can't wait to welcome you to Rochdale Town Hall. We can't, wel we can't welcome you into the building just yet. You'll have to wait a couple of years for that. But if you or any of your groups or anyone you support would like to get involved, we'd really love to hear from you. There are so many ways that we'd like to engage with you and we can't wait to start. Thank you.